It's not my fault. Is it your fault? Is it your fault? Is it your fault? <sighs> Today's lesson is all about faults. Have you ever tried to break a caramel candy bar in two, but it may only bend or stretch at first? Like a candy bar, many types of rock can bend or fold, but beyond a certain point, even rocks will break. When enough stress builds up into a rock, the rock breaks, and we call that break in a rock a fault. A fault is a break in the crust where slabs of crust slip past one another and they usually occur along the plate boundaries where forces of plate motion can either compress, they can pull, or they can shear past the crust so that it breaks. There's three types of faults that we're going to talk about today. Make sure you put these in your notes. The first fault I want to talk about is called a normal fault. This is created by a force called tension. Make sure you remember that. Normal faults are caused by tension. Tension is what happens when you take, let's say, a rope and you pull really hard on both sides of it. The stress that that rope is under is caused by tension. So what happens with rocks is when the rock gets stretched out, it becomes thinned in the middle. This happens at divergent boundaries because the plates are moving away from one another. The second type of fault is called reverse fault. And it's kind of opposite of a normal fault. In a reverse fault, it's compression forces. It's squeezing the rock until it ends up folding or breaking. Make sure you remember reverse fault is caused by compression. The third kind of fault is called a strike slip fault. This occurs from stress that pushes a mass of rock in two opposite directions. This is called shearing. So remember, strike slip fault is formed from shearing. This occurs at transform plate boundaries, which is where two plates slide past each other. This side of the fault is also one that causes earthquakes. Now the extent of what you feel an earthquake is caused by the friction that is between those two plates. If there's not a lot of friction and they move really slowly, they're not going to have a major earthquake if they slide past one another easily. But if there's a lot of friction and they have a hard time and they finally snap, then you're going to have a major earthquake. Now these faults, these cracks in the earth, can build mountains. When a normal fault uplifts a block of rock, we call it a fault block mountain. When two normal faults form and they're parallel to one another, what ends up happening is that a block of rock is left lying between them. As the hanging wall of each fault slips downward, the block in between then moves upward and it creates a mountain. Opposite of that though, when a block of rock lying between slides downward, then we have a valley that forms. Sometimes instead of actually faulting or cracking, plate movements can just cause the crust to fold. Folds are bends in the rock that form when compression either has shortened or thickened part of the earth's crust. Think of it like a towel. If I have a towel all laid out and I take the two ends and I slide inwards, I'm not going to crack the towel, it's just going to make folds. That's what happens when two plates collide together or when there's compression. Collision of these two plates is what causes the folding in the crust. Uh, have you ever heard of the Himalayas or the Alps? These are examples of folded mountains. Now when a fold happens, sometimes it can bend into an arch going upward. This is called an anticline. An easy way to remember this is A for arch, A for anticline. But sometimes a downward bend forms and this is called a syncline. Make sure in your lab journal you know the three types of faults, you know the force that causes each fault, and you know what happens as a result of those faults. Also make sure you know what anticline and syncline mean. Make sure you put that in your lab journal, Rewatch the video if you have to to get that down, and I'll see you guys in class. <laughs>